is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hanging Heavy. As always, I'm your boy, Disc Crater. Coming with you all by my lonesome because uh, I ain't got... I ain't got nobody. I ain't got nobody. And uh, you know what? That's all right. I haven't done this show alone in a while, so... I guess uh, that's all. That's all fine and dandy, you know. Uh, I guess uh, I'll start off with uh, a, a a couple shout outs. I haven't said what's up to my boy Josh in Japan. Uh, you know, I love you, and I hope you know I mean it. <laughs> uh, I was supposed to give out some shout outs the last episode, but uh. It got a little sexy. Got a little sexy in the Skype. You know what I'm talking about? Got real steamy. Oh, guys, come on. Stop it. All right. All right. That's enough of that. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah. Uh, Can't wait till you're back in my arms, Joshy. (laughs) <laughs> um uh I have a a surprise visitor show up today and um uh, it's always good to see him. It's my brother. We'll call him Roland. Um he showed up today and you know it always makes my dad happy to see him. So that's that's good. And you know sometimes it makes me feel better to see him cuz he's an idiot. But I love that stupid idiot. <laughs> What's up, Rolo? Let me cut your hair, son. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was gonna join me, but I mean, this motherfucker wakes up early. He got on a fucking plane to be here, so. Uh, yeah, shout out to him. I found out something interesting today that I didn't know his old ass had, but I guess he's trying to keep up with the youngins, and he got himself a TikTok. Now, I don't understand what TikTok is fully, but that's because I don't have any social media. And you know what? That's on me. But go ahead and uh, check him out if you're on the platform. Uh, give him some love. He's at, at Roland1, all undercase, uh, all undercase letters, lowercase, lowercase, undercase. Uh, stupid American brain here. But yeah, that's uh, at Roland1. The number one, not... Let me just spell it out. God damn it. I feel like an idiot. Um, At R-O-L-A-N-D. The number Juan. And uh, he mostly posts shit about himself. So, uh, if you're into getting into the personal lives and uh, trying to understand the human psyche, uh, uh, go check his shit out. I don't know what he does, so if there's anything inappropriate... That's on him. We do not share his opinions and actions. Do not reflect those of Hanging Heavy Incorporation. Uh, legal jargon. Rada rada. Garble garble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Shout out to those that are working out and making themselves better. I know my uh, potato is out there quitting smoking, working on that six-pack. So, shout out to you. Uh, Empowerment is sexy. And everyone around you can feel it and see it. So, good on you. I'm uh, a person that has a shit fucking sense of will. Uh, I have no willpower. (laughs) <laughs> you have no power over me. You have no power over me. Shout out to those that uh, understand what that is from. And if you do, mwah, little kiss from daddy. <coughs> so, yeah. Oh, what's going on, guys? Um, How's your life going? Hopefully your new year has gone pretty good uh, for me. I'm kind of getting into that 
winter fucking slump, you know, that weird feeling where it's not really depression, but you don't feel fucking all sparkly and shiny. It happens to me all the time. Comes and goes. Uh, maybe I'm manic depression. Maybe I have manic depression. I don't know. Fucking. I'm not a. I don't claim to be a psychiatrist because I don't believe in that scientific jargon mumbo jumbo. Maybe it's not even really a science, a pseudoscience. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> Whatever. Um, whether it's real or not, it's not up to me. And, um, you know, for those of you that feel like they're on the dark end of that or or spiraling out of control, talk to somebody. If not somebody close to you, talk to me. That's what I'm here for. Leave a comment. Uh, I regularly check the YouTube, and for that, you can just go to the YouTube uh, search bar, type in Hanging Heavy Podcast, because apparently you have to have at least 100 subscribers to get a custom URL from YouTube. So if you guys could get on that fucking game and uh, at least help me make it easier to reach people by just saying go to YouTube slash Hanging Heavy whatever fucking versus U8, A765, fucking 3,000, 100 million, whatever the fucking custom URL that it, they gave me is. Uh, let's let's get it going, y'all. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been kind of kind of a weird one. I haven't done a solo episode in a while. Shout out to my boy Carlton and Poppy. Uh, Poppy Ray hopefully might come back and do the show over Skype which is cool because I don't mind it's a lot easier to hold a conversation with two people versus me kind of rambling to myself and maybe it'll be better for my psyche and uh, make for an overall better show (laughs) and I guess without uh, overstepping my boundaries uh Let's get into some segments, you know, like how I used to do the show when I did it by myself. And we'll get into a little tech and uh, science. And health. (laughs) I love that intro. And uh, again, I make all this music myself. So if you're ever looking for any background music or... Something that I could possibly help out with? Hit me up. I'm not above it. I need money. Uh, all my credit cards are maxed, and uh, the government is looking for me. I haven't paid taxes in the last five years. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess moving on. I was going to cover this back in December when I found out about it. But you can't prepare for the unpreparable, you know? And... Let's go ahead and just read off this title from the FDA.gov. So you know it's legit. It's from the Food and Drug Administration. So the first ever FDA approved vaccine for the prevention of the Ebola virus is marking a critical milestone in public health preparedness and response. So they finally found something that they can help reduce the number of outbreaks of Ebola. Now, Ebola is not a very big disease, but it does happen. And uh, there's people around the world that are affected by it every day. So the fact that they finally were able to push something through that could possibly work is fucking awesome. It's a, a stepping stone to the future. And who's to say that's wrong? I mean, who knows what the side effects are? But hey, if we can cure you from something that will definitely kill you by giving you diarrhea and headaches every day for the next 10 years, I think that's a pretty good (laughs) trade-off. Now, I may be in the wrong with that one, but... You know what? I'll take it. Now, speaking of uh, diseases that are starting to fucking outbreak uh have you been paying attention to the Kenora virus 
uh, it's uh, kind of a big deal, and it's uh, starting to make its way into the States. There's already one uh, confirmed case in the United States. It used to be that it was only centralized in China with 17 people affected, or 17 people showing massive symptoms and possibly hundreds infected around the world. It's in China, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Thailand, and mostly the Eastern Asian places. Uh, but by the end of the week, you know how people travel and don't know they're sick? Uh, who knows what the shelf life for this is? So just be careful if you're fucking traveling. Use a shit ton of hand sanitizer. Wear one of those fucking SARS masks. Who cares if you look like an asshole? As long as you're safe and protected, right? Especially those of you that have kids or families that are dependent on you. Make sure you come back safe. Now, if you're just traveling to China because you're an asshole and you have a lot of money, well, I mean, good luck. <laughs> I need to fucking put that on my soundboard. Good luck. Now, I came across this uh, recently, and their scientists are calling it, and let me go ahead and cite my source, because I don't want anyone coming after me, sciencemag.org. And the article was written by Robert F. Service. What a weird pen name, but whatever works, Robert. <laughs> now, just the headline alone fucking is pretty impressive. And let me go ahead and read that. Frankenstein material can self-heal and reproduce. So that's pretty badass. And uh, there's an image of a miniature uh, leg of a bridge, I guess you could call it. And underneath that, the caption for the picture is microbes that lay down minerals can create concrete-like building materials. And this was coming out of the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences slash the University of Colorado in Boulder. Uh, this new concrete is using a type of bacteria and uh, a whole bunch of science nonsense. Uh, honestly, let me go ahead and just read fucking verbatim. The new concrete is the latest addition to the burgeoning field of engineering living materials, ELMS. Didn't know that was a thing. In which organisms typically bacteria, are added to inanimate materials to enable them to sense, communicate, and even respond to their environments. So they're basically fucking putting mold into concrete. <laughs> or any other kind of uh, surface or porous materials, I guess. Right? Uh, in recent years, researchers have, in have created ELMS that sense pressure, kill dangerous bacteria, and sense light. Both those materials are usually thin films and they grow atop structural supports. Now, under the right conditions, which include relatively high humidity, Subar's living material not only survived but reproduced after the researchers split the original brick in half and added sand, hydrogel, and nutrients. The cyan bacteria grew in six hours into two full size bricks. Holy fuck! After three generations in which the researchers again split the bricks, they had eight bricks. They reported that in Matter. I'm guessing that's some kind of publication. But holy fuck, they were able to basically do what starfish do. You break a fucking appendage off and they regrow it. So they took one brick, split it into two bricks, split it into two bricks, split it into two bricks, so they had eight. What the fuck? That's fucking future shit, dog. And that's fucking cool, man. Whoever said science was boring is an asshole. And fuck you. <laughs> now this last bit, um, I talked about it mm, sometime last year. I don't remember quite which episode it was. But in China, there was a scientist that genetically engineered babies. He made designer babies, whether that be having them be born with blue eyes or 
uh, being less susceptible to certain diseases or illnesses basically reconstructing and redesigning the DNA itself uh, well this motherfucker was finally sentenced to jail a Chinese court has sentenced the scientists behind the world's first gene edited babies he's sentenced to three years in prison and the court said the researchers team crossed the bottom line of ethics and I completely agree uh, my dad was watching Rocky 4 earlier and if they die they die <laughs> so yeah he was also fined 3 million yuan 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 excuse my uh, lack of culture cultured awareness uh, I don't know how you the one and uh, for us petty Americans that's around 430,000 now I don't know how much scientists are making in China but he was sentenced to two years in prison Wow with two other colleagues and uh, they were also fined around 140,000 1 million Wan Yuan and the third person was find 500 yuan 500,000 yuan around 71 million dollars and sentenced to 18 months in prison with the two year reprieve so uh, motherfucker can't go nowhere um that's kind of a big deal because fucking who in their right mind thinks gene editing is a great idea in the time and place that we're in I think it's kind of playing God, but I mean, who's even to say there's such a thing? Whatever, I just tread lightly, my friend. Yes, science. Okay, so I want to take a quick break to cut breaking news. Uh, so yeah, apparently with this update, there's two confirmed U.S. citizens with the coronavirus so I just wanted to mention I got a piece of merch in the mail today or yesterday if this sounds familiar it's uh, from a, a group of talented artists uh, that I have brought up numerous times uh, a group of guys coming out of Lansing, Michigan. Shout out Michigan Gangsters. But it's uh, a piece of merch from my boy Packy. He's gonna re uh, excuse me. He's gonna release a a new album, and in support of that album, he set out a bunch of merch. And people that bought the merch were gonna be able to stream the album for 24 hours before it drops. And the way people make music now is they drop singles, not albums. So this is 24 hours to get the entire album back to back to back to back. Shout out to another one of those Spec 16s that he does. <laughs> and yeah, this dude, his music is fucking incredible. Uh, it's solid hip hop. I mean, it's not fucking gimmick bullshit. Uh, he's got bars. I know he doesn't like hearing that. But uh, white boy can rap, you know? And uh, it's not a, a fucking thing about color or race. Dude dude can spit, alright? So, I mean, just just with that, you should... My seal of, uh, of approval. Anyway, this piece of merch... I bought a hoodie, because fucking throwing that big dick around, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I got little pee-pee. Um, yeah, so... The album he's going to drop is called Guess You Had To Be There. And to support the album dropping, he dropped this merch line out, right? And all it is is a black hoodie and in a nice font embroidered on the chest says, I was there. Now, I've bought hats, shirts, just to support the Spectators Collective because their music is hype. They signed some good artists and they had to let go of some good artists, but... That's business, you know? And uh, they've put me on to some good music, and uh, I'll forever be thankful. Uh, Nobody Epic uh, and the crew put me on to their music. 
back. I don't even know how long ago. I've, I don't even know how long I've been listening to the fucking spec. But in the background, the song Jump Off from the Parlay album uh, is playing in the back. Hopefully, I don't get copywritten or copyright strike or whatever the fuck YouTube guidelines follow or fucking get flagged and demonetized. Not like I make money anyway. I just wanted to spread the word with the Spectators Collective. S P E K T A T O R S. Collective. Spectators. Check them out. Uh, I'm just gonna let the song play out in the back. I'm gonna, I guess, keep talking about it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, you guys get a, you guys get a piece of merch and support, support the dude doing his thing. Uh, I, I don't know. This song is one of their hypest songs. Uh, they have a bunch of great songs on this album. So if you wanna dive into the Spectators Collective. And their artist Packy, the album Parlay, the Parlay, excuse me, uh, it's a solid starting point. A bunch of great songs on that album, and uh, it's just good, solid work. And you can tell he felt good when he made it. You know, it makes me feel good to listen to it. God damn. Uh, excuse me, I just have to get that off my chest, or just say that I was there. <laughs> So, yeah, it feels good to kind of get back into this uh, little, I don't want to say repetition of uh, doing this show, but uh, it feels good to get back into doing the systematic formula way of doing this show, which is uh, doing it in segments. It makes it a lot easier if I have to go back and edit or whoops, if I have to go back and, uh, whoops, uh, just doing the music and whatnot makes it a whole lot easier. I can concentrate my mind into one field. So, I mean, I'm learning this. I've been doing this for about two years almost at this point. Um, so I'm not perfect. I'm far from what you call a professional, but I think I have a handle on what I think sounds good enough to put out and uh it's entertaining enough that uh or informative even and you know what if you can combine information with uh entertainment who 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 says you're wrong you know that's a fucking that's what you want right you want to fucking let people know what's up and uh you want to fucking let people know what's up you know Whoops, uh, you want to let people know what's up and you want to let people know what's up. <laughs> uh, and with that little rim shot, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the little boy's room and uh, rich and rare. And I'm back. Um, uh, Hopefully you guys aren't really bothered by the interruptions like that. For you, they're instantaneous, but for me, they're... Anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. And uh, sometimes it takes up the whole night. And uh, you know what? That's completely cool with me. I'm fine with it. I get it done. And uh, uh, for, you, for you, it's a split second. Thanks to the magic of editing. Ooh. Thanks to the magic of editing. <laughs> oh. Stop it, guys. You flatter me. Oh my god. <sighs> you know, I think I'm going crazy. <laughs> Just sitting in this room all by myself. <laughs> Talking to myself. <laughs> Pushing buttons and. <sighs> That's enough of that. <laughs> yeah, so I love this fucking Elgato stream deck. It completely helped streamline this sh shit. I mean, I can have any sound effect at the tip of my button. He be like, shut the fuck up. I be quiet. <laughs> but when he leaves, I be talking again. I be talking again. 
And uh, I can spam it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this thing is just fucking all kinds of cool. Dip, 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 dip. Um, so I guess I really don't have any other segue, but uh, let's get into the next bit of shit. <laughs> For those uninitiated... This is my uh, not a sponsor music bit section. Um, the shit that I'm going to talk about really has nothing to do with sponsorship or corporations or whatnot. I usually use this music for when I'm going to be talking about a, a bunch of companies doing cool shit, innovative shit, or just fucking terrible bullshit. And, uh, Whenever you hear this music, just know that I'm not affiliated with any of these companies or people or people that run companies. But this music is just too cool to not use for this next bit of shit that I got going. Technically, this would be under my what the fuck news. And uh, let me go ahead and cut that off and play the what the fuck news. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. (laughs) Now, don't get me wrong. This music is cool as fuck, too. And... You know what, for the sake of uh, segments, I'll just go ahead and use it, because this is what this music segment is needed for. Uh, So, yeah, I guess without hesitation, I'm going to get into what the fuck news. These are just stories that I found over the past few weeks, uh, months, uh, just the past that uh, I thought were ridiculous or just completely out there. So I read this on CNN's website. Man strangles rabid coyote to death after it attacks his son. (laughs) Now, that's some fucking hardcore man shit, you know? Let me go ahead and just read it. A New Hampshire man killed a coyote with his bare hands after he grabbed his two-year-old son by its jacket hood and dragged him to the ground now I would probably do I would have stomped this coyote because coyotes are uh, not that big they're not small by any means but you could totally stomp one out I got size 13's dog I'll, I'll stomp that motherfucker out you know and then with my girth <laughs> motherfucker gonna be a pancake Anyway, he went on to tell CNN he'd never harmed an animal, so it was a weird experience. After the coyote bit him twice, he tried fending it off. He kicked it away and used his body weight to suffocate it while holding its snout shut. Oh, fuck. Uh, The coyote tested for positive for rabies, so this motherfucker probably got 40 shots in the stomach, or that's how I know they do rabies shots on people. I don't know if there's a new method, but I know it's not fun. And uh, apparently, based on evidence they collected, talking with several people, they had recently seen coyotes in the area acting erratically. So they don't believe this is the only coyote in the area that may have rabies. Uh, For those of you that don't know, rabies is a virus that infects mammals. When infected, animals bite a human. Rabies is transmitted from the saliva through the open wound and into the nerves. When the virus reaches the brain and spinal cord... Oh, the virus then attacks the the brain and spinal cord. Uh, CDC and all wildlife experts recommend seeing a doctor after post-exposure or for post-exposure after contact with any wild animal, just in case they may be infected and before the virus has a chance to turn fatal. (laughs) He went on again to say, I was able to get its head into the snow and get my hand around its snout. It could no longer bite me, and from there I was able to suffocate it using my body weight and scissor locking it until it basically expired. So this motherfucker pulled some Krav Maga and choked this fucking coyote to death. Now, if some fucking dog or wild animal went after my kid, I would completely... And 
you can guarantee I'm fucking snuffing the life out of that motherfucker. Uh, now, if it were something bigger, like a fucking wolf, uh, I'm definitely gonna get fucked up, but that's the reason why I always carry some kind of knife on me, whether that be a, a pocket a box cutter or a physical fucking knife. I usually carry folders because uh, you have to be a psycho or some kind of fucking douchebag to carry a full tang knife in a sheath. Who does that? You're not on a ranch. You're not in the wilderness. I live in a city. Calm down. Discretion is best. <laughs> but, you know, using that, great segue, Desecrator. No problem, Desecrator. You're fucking awesome. A Kansas man didn't want to have said discretion. Now, this man was in an ugly custody battle with his wife and wanted to settle the, tr the trial or the battle for custody of his kids by trial of combat with Japanese katanas. <laughs> Let me repeat that. A Kansas man threw down the gauntlet to his ex-wife and her attorney seeking permission from the court to settle the custody the custody uh, conflict that they had for child just <laughs> as you can tell I do this raw he was seeking permission from the court to settle their child custody case on the field of battle with a sword fight <laughs> now this motherfucker ain't no fucking 20 year old weeb this guy's old, dude. He's 40, all right? This motherfucker been around the block. Uh, it ain't no dumb kid. It's just some dumb old man. <laughs> he claims that her attorney have already... He... Excuse me. In court papers, he claims that his ex-wife... I'm not going to mention names because you can use Google if you're interested in finding out more. They have already destroyed him legally... And their ongoing legal battle is in their hometown, and uh, they've diminished his uh, manhood, I guess. Now, a statement, quote, in, in quotes, Now, I now wish to give them the chance to meet me on the field of battle, where I will rend their souls from their bodies. <laughs> Yo, this ain't no anime shit, dog. You're asking the court... If you can fucking fight to the death for your kids? What kind of role model are you, you idiot? That's even worse, dude. Just let your kids go and see them every other weekend. Fuck, man. You want to kill the mother of your child? Uh, I've never been in that situation, but... I've grown up in a broken home, so... <laughs> Get over it, dude. If she wants to fuck other guys, let her fuck other guys. If uh, you want to fuck other women, fuck other women. Don't fight for the battle. What the fuck's wrong with you, dude? It's not that important. You can still see your kids. Be reasonable, man. Take it easy, man. You, you've had too much. That's your drunk friend at the bar. Hey, man, I'll fucking fight anybody, bro. I'll fucking throw down. This fucking guy's gonna tell me that his shoes are better? Fuck him, man. He fucking talks shit, I'm gonna fuck him up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna assume this dude's white because katana swords, really, dog? Japanese swords. Not even. He doesn't even say katanas, he says Japanese swords. I will rend their souls from their bodies. <laughs> Let that sink in. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Whatever. I guess this last bit of what the fuck news is. Uh, uh, I've I've read several stories regarding said celebrity, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hold on. I'm gonna cue the not a sponsor because I don't want to cease and desist. Uh, I have no affiliations with said person or said person's company, but. Let me go ahead and play this until I get into the next part. When is Paltrow has released a candle? And what fragrance, may you ask, is said candle? 
Okay, not a sponsor. Over, and this is the what the fuck news part. <laughs> she has released a candle that smells like her vagina. <laughs> Oof, fish tacos, you know. Now, uh, everything that I was able to find doesn't specifically say her vagina. It just says a vagina. But uh, I mean, where, where could she get these core samples from? You know. I'm pretty sure she's sitting around all day schwabbing that, schwabbing that roast beef. Mm, who am I kidding? I bet she, she has a fucking, she has a pretty patty. Let's go, let's go that far to say. I bet she, she has a pretty patty. <laughs> she went on to say, it smells funny, gorgeous, sexy, and beautifully unexpected. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever smelled a vagina that smells funny and gorgeous. Sexy and beautiful, I can understand, but funny and gorgeous? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you like that, idiot. <laughs> uh, she, she's uh, made a strong business out of her vagina. She's uh, sold uh, vagina eggs or whatever that were supposed to help... Uh, I don't even fucking know. She she has nothing backed by the FDA or whatever to be putting out such claims. Uh, but let's see. According to this candle, this the candle is named This Smells Like My Vagina. It's a funny, gorgeous, sexy, and beautifully unexpected scent with geranium, citrusy, bergamot, and cedar. It absolutely juxtaposed with damask rose and ambrette seed. Yeah, that totally thinks that, that makes me think of vagina. Uh, the goal, the goop description optimistically reads, it's to put us in a mind of fantasy, seduction, and a sophisticated warmth. And uh, apparently they're sold out, and one candle cost 75 American dollars. <laughs> no. No, thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry, Gwyneth, but I ain't gonna buy no fucking stinky pussy candle anytime. You know, I'm curious to know what it smells like, but it's a pussy. What the fuck could it smell like? If it's supposed to smell like vagina, for real, for real, like it's not a good candle. You don't want to light that motherfucker, if you know what I'm saying. Is the wick made out of fucking pubic hair? <laughs> God damn it, Gwyneth. <laughs> and uh, I guess with that, uh, I have one little bit of segment that I want to talk about. But again, I, I'm going to have to get my prostate checked because I got to go pee pee again. Uh, Richard Rare. So, yeah, the last little bit of information or just the last bit of shit that I wanted to share with you is. Uh, if you don't know by now, I love video games. I love playing them. I love reading about them. I love reading about the development. And it's uh, incredible how far we've come from when I started first playing video games. So let's uh, get into that. Uh, I play console. I know I'm a console pleb. But I'm not going to pay four times as much for a PC just for better graphics and uh, a little smoother gameplay I, if I can have a fun time for a quarter of the price and the games cost just as much on all platforms pretty much but they're more easily uh, uh, I guess I, uh, they're easily they're developed more for console because that's more of what is sold out there yeah PC numbers have been boosted in the last five years but uh, they, they don't touch console sales all right it's easier just to plug in and play so uh, with that said uh, I'm gonna I just found out that PlayStation has a 2019 wrapped up just like that Spotify shit that I tried to get and uh, just didn't work out so this is my PlayStation 2019 wrapped up let's see how I scored over the last year 
<laughs> my top three games. Well, first off, I played 22 different games in 2019. My top three being Rocket League with over... I have 220 hours played in 2019 alone. I've been playing this game for four years. Or since it, be, since it launched on PlayStation. Uh, uh, coming in number two, 77 hours, Borderlands 3. Uh, I play with my boy Carlton and it's a shit ton of fun. And uh, we're barely getting into the grinding part of it, so uh, we're trying to get as much loot. Give me the loot! Give me the loot! And number three with 27 hours kind of shocked me. I haven't played this game in quite some time. But with 27 hours played, Minecraft. <laughs> uh, my son plays that mostly now, but I'll hop on with him every now and then. But yeah, 27 hours. Number two is 77 hours, and a whopping number one, I'm not shocked, Rocket League with 220. Again, for those of you that are new, this fucking podcast started because of my love for Rocket League. Uh, I started it with a fellow fellow Rocketeer, um, my boy Papi Ray, and that's the reason why we started this shit back in the day, two years ago pretty much, so that's fucking awesome. My top genre was driving, racing. I played three games, had three trophies in over 219 hours. I'm going to guess that Rocket League is a <laughs> driving, racing game. Whoa, I clocked in over 1,100 hours of gameplay. That's 1,134 hours of gameplay. Throughout the year, I played 201 days, 890 hours locally. 244 hours online and my longest gaming streak was 8 hours I'm gonna go ahead and say that was probably when the first Destiny came out or no fuck that's not right fuck what the fuck did I play for 8 hours does it tell you no it does not my prime time day to play is Sunday evenings now with the Playstation system I'm sure with Xbox it's also the same Achievements with PlayStation is trophies. I earned 85 new trophies in the year 2019. 76 bronze, 6 silver, 3 gold, 0 platinum. Because those are hard to fucking play. <laughs> uh, oh, it even tells you this. I downloaded 9 free games of the month through PlayStation Plus. Now, this is fucking awesome. I'm glad that I pay $65 a year. Every month they release two games to download for free from back catalog of PlayStation games. And uh, you can download them. You don't have to play them right away. And they last for as a however long the license is that they let you have it with. So some games I've had for four years, a.k.a. Rocket League. And uh, sometimes the games, they can pull them if they're not getting enough downloads. With this, I saved $12 with PS Plus offers and game add-ons. <laughs> of course, my top played online game with PlayStation Plus is Rocket League, with a whole, oh, almost 180 hours played online. Last year, PS Plus members were offered up to 24 free games at, extra, at no extra cost. And the ones that I downloaded were Steep, For Honor, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the Witness, The Surge, Conan Exile, What Remains of Edith Finch, I do not remember that, Overcooked, Borderlands The Handsome Collection, Sonic Mania, Detroit Become Human, beautiful fucking made game, I will probably play it again sometime in the near future, and Wipeout. Hmm. Um... What the fuck? Uh, so yeah, uh, there's some some advertisements for PlayStation Music and PlayStation Now. Don't care. But Desecrator Six, thank you for playing your 29 title. Your 2019 title is Speed Demon, with 22 games, 1134 hours and 85 trophies. Share your accomplishments now with hashtag MyPSYear2019 on Facebook and Twitter. I have neither. But I can redeem my prizes. Let me go ahead and click on redeem your prizes. 
Oh, please don't be lame. Oh, that sucks. Uh, I get the PlayStation wrap-up <laughs> theme and avatar. Uh, let's uh, go to view reward. Let's redeem this reward. Copy to clipboard. Uh, excuse me, and uh, you'll listen to some sweet-ass tunes that I managed to create on my own. Humble brag. God damn it, I gotta put my password in again. Don't try to figure that out. I know there's some fucking savants there. Really? Okay, let's go there. I entered my 12... I get an, a, a wrap-up action hero. A wrap-up master explorer. I have no idea what any of this. Sports phenom, speed demon, marksman, legendary warrior, oh, straight... Whatever, I'm just going to redeem all of this, and they're probably stupid avatars. Eight, eight things have been redeemed. Let's go back. Okay, yeah, alright, I already redeemed all this stuff. Let's, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I already redeemed it, fuck you. See completed quest. Uh, yeah, 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 okay, whatever, I don't want to see my account information. Uh, let's, uh, view my reward, I already did that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I already did that. Yeah, alright, so fuck you, that's it. So yeah, um, my son has gotten into Dragon Ball Z for whatever known reason. <clears throat> and it amazes me that he gets into a bunch of shit that I was into as a kid. Oh, shit. I found a legendary, y'all. <laughs> How fitting. Um, but yeah, uh... He wanted me to get him this new game, Kakarot, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Um, coincidentally, it's only for console <laughs> and PC. Never mind, I'm an idiot. He usually plays his games on a Switch, which this game wasn't released for, so I had to buy it for the PS4. <laughs> and uh, we're a couple hours into it. And uh, it's pretty fun, actually. I mean, it starts off with the Saiyan Saga. And uh, it goes through it a little faster than clearly the manga and the the anime. The anime? Anime? <laughs> Get up! Aye! Sorry for that racism. <laughs> but yeah, um, he loves it. It's a... Uh, fighting RPG style game it's not turn based cause that sucks so that's a good thing but uh he's um, he's only 7 so he still isn't the greatest at handling fighting schematics and games like that but your boy your boy's a classically trained gamer so it's I mean not hard can't change the difficulty I don't think at least I haven't figured that part out but yeah, we're having fun with it, and it's a, a pretty well-made game. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. And if there's something that you want to do with your kids that you don't know how to reach out to them, try video games, man. Video games is a really easy, easy, easy platform to get to know your children or your child or your kids, your booze kids, whatever the case is, you know. Ultimate Uniter. Video games. Almost almost as close as music, but music is a lot harder. There's way too much diversity in that, but you get the drift. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this went on a little bit longer than I anticipated, but you know, it feels good to know that I can still hold up this show by myself. And maybe it's a little less chaotic because I can uh, plan a little bit better. But, you know, I enjoy doing it with my boys and hopefully you guys are entertained. Um, you can find this podcast. I know it's a little late to be saying this. Whoever podcasts are posted, hosted and uh, displayed. Apple. Tune? Uh, uh, the fuck, I don't know. Apple iTunes, uh, fuck, that's dead, uh, Apple 
store, the Google Play store. Uh, you can go to the website hangingheavy.podbean.com. That's easy. You can uh, also download the Podbean app. And for me, that's the best way to experience the show. You can uh, download, you can like, comment, share, and you can find probably more podcasts that you love to listen to there. I'm sure they're hosted there. Um, if not, you can always go to YouTube, search uh, in the search bar, Hanging Heavy Podcast, and you'll see my sweet new logo. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for my repeat offenders. Uh, I appreciate it. If you're new, uh, go ahead and if you like the show or if you thought it was eh, shout me out on your fucking social media. I don't. I don't have any social media for this, so this is all fucking word of mouth. This is all uh, street team grind, and uh, if you could uh, help me, uh, hopefully I can help you with uh, giving you some knowledge or just some stupid, dumb entertainment. As always, I'm your boy Desecrator. This has been Hanging Heavy, and i like to close out the show with uh, a much love and rich and rare. Yay!